Hello and welcome to Pearls of Parma Dice. My name is Courtney and I'm coming to you from Parma, Ohio, where I live with my husband and all of our yarn. Uh, today is Thursday, November 24th, and it's Thanksgiving here in the United States. So if you celebrate, happy Thanksgiving. Um, if you don't, happy Thursday or Friday. Uh, it'll probably be Friday when this goes up. So it's a beautiful sunny day so far. I'm recording pretty early. Uh, we are hosting Thanksgiving. Uh, so I have some family coming over, just my parents and my brothers, um, that I want to get this done before they get here and before I need to start putting things in the oven. And I don't want to miss the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So we're going to get right to it. I hope you all are well. Um, if you are looking for my Instagram or Ravelry or my Pokemon Go friend code, all of those are down below. And I will also try to link everything that I talk about in the description box as well. Um, thank you all for watching and commenting and liking and subscribing. It just means the world to me. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, so let's talk about what I'm wearing. I have been feeling the mini skein, I don't know, vibe or whatever lately. Um, Amber of A Lovely Yarn Podcast, you should check her out. She just did an episode the other day with, I kid you not, 50 scrappy or mini skein patterns. Oh, I just want to knit them all. Um, so I thought with everybody getting advents or mini skein kits this time of year, it would be a good time to show off um, my Land of Sweets by Helen Stewart. So I knit this and I'll take it off so I can show you. And got our preview going away, there we go. <laughs> I knit this a couple of years ago out of the Big Sky Yarn Co. Vintage Christmas Advent um, for 2020. And I believe that this advent, I could be wrong, but I believe it was only 50, no, that doesn't make sense. Only um, 10 gram mini skeins. And I had a lot left over after this, enough that I was able to put uh, quite a bit of it into my cozy memories blanket. And this cowl, it's got some ribbing at the top. This gorgeous, I don't know how well you can see that, we're working with some artificial light this morning as it's still pretty early. Um, some lace, different lace, other lace, more ribbing. It is such a fun pattern to knit. Um, it's knit in the round. You're always pretty constantly changing colors or changing what you're doing. Oh, there's texture up here too. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see maybe a little bit. There's some textured sections, there's lace, there's just striping. It is so much fun. If you're looking for a nice um, scrappy project or a project for your advent minis, um, this is a great one. I really enjoyed knitting it and I like that it didn't use up a lot of yarn. So if you have just teeny little five to seven gram balls laying around, um, maybe from leftovers from socks or whatever, this would be a great project. It just does, calls for, I think, 24 mini skeins. So anyways, that is The Land of Sweets by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And even if this isn't your jam, but you're looking for other um, scrappy or mini skein projects, she has a lot of wonderful ones. And I would highly recommend you check out um, Amber's episode. Again, that's a lovely yarn podcast here on YouTube. Um, check her episode. She has so many really cool scrappy projects that she talks about. Um, so I would highly recommend that. We'll just pop this back on and it's just, it's fingering weight. So it's so light, but it's also cozy and it's such a fun pop of color. I just love it. 
Okay, so that's what I'm wearing. I am wearing my apple cider socks, but you guys have seen those if you've been around the podcast for the last, I don't know, three or four episodes. You've seen my progress on those. They were a finished object last time, so you guys kind of know what those look like. So we're not going to not gonna put my leg up to show those today. All right, I have one finished object that I'm calling a finished object and lots of whips. Three of these things you haven't seen before. They're new casts on, casts on, cast-ons, whatever. They are new projects as of the last episode. In case you're wondering why I tapped the screen, after two minutes, my phone, I record on my phone. This is, we are not fancy over here. The fanciest we get is I have a ring light. We're just not, and that's okay, it works. Uh, but my phone uh, turns the screen off after two minutes, and then I tell it not to, and it does it again after two minutes. But now we should be good. Uh, so if you haven't been around and you're wondering why I'm doing that, it's because otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, finished object that we're calling a finished object. So I talked about in my last episode, I am knitting. Uh, one of my sisters-in-law requested stockings for her three um, kids for Christmas. Uh, she had actually asked me where she could buy some knit stockings with for her kids that would be sort of cohesive, but a little bit different for each one. And I was like, well, I could just make them for Christmas. Um, so I have the first one done. Uh, the only part that's not done, which is why it's a finished object, but it's also not a true finished object. Um, I'm going to add a little leather strap here to hang the stocking with. But this one is for my nephew, Peter. And this is the Polar Bear Stroll Stocking by Brianna K. Designs. Um, I added this white portion here, and I'll talk about the yarn here in a minute. I want to talk about my modifications first. So I added this portion here. Um, this is not written into the pattern. You go from your cuff, and I think maybe you just do one round of white, and then you go right into the collar work. But my sister-in-law wanted names, which I was happy to oblige, but I was also very nervous <laughs> that they wouldn't come out. Thankfully, her kids all have shorter names um, that would fit on a stocking. But I just did duplicate stitch. I looked up on Pinterest for charts um, for duplicate stitched letters, and I found some charts and just sort of... Uh, looked at how many stitches I had across, how many stitches each letter took. Um, and then what I did was I put at the bottom where each letter I wanted to start it. Um, I worked these duplicate stitches. I worked each letter individually bottom up. Um, I put a removable stitch marker in so that they would be evenly spaced. There is one letter on here it has an extra, oh, right there, you can kind of see. It's got an extra stitch between the letters, but it's fine. It's fine. I love the way that these came out. So the, let's talk about the yarn. <laughs> that was my other little um, accidental modification. So uh, if you were around last episode, you know, um, the day before I podcast last, my husband was in a car accident. He's totally fine. Um, ended up with just a bruise on his calf. That was it. Totally fine. Our car was totally not fine. And um, right after I finished recording, I did get the news that our insurance had totaled the vehicle, which we'll talk about more about that in life update. It's all worked out actually really wonderfully. So we'll talk about that in the life update more. But anyways, I had said, um, I was probably going to have to cool my heels for a little bit on my yarn buying uh, just because we didn't know what we were going to get for our vehicle and we were going to have to buy something else and all of all that stuff. You guys, I didn't intend to buy yarn, okay? I did not set out to do this, but sometimes when you're meant to buy the yarn, you're just meant to buy the yarn, you know? 
the yarn life chose me. <laughs> so I recorded, I got this uploading, right? I was like, okay, I've been, you know, the whole day I'm texting people about this car stuff. Okay, finally, I got a chance that afternoon to sit down. I was like, I've got to get these stockings cast on. I want two of these done by the end of the month. I really want them all out and to my nieces and nephew by December 10th at the latest. I really want those done so that they can have them hanging up and enjoy them um, for the Christmas season. So I sat down with my balls of City Tweed uh, Knit Picks, City Tweed DK, which is one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite yarns in general. Probably my favorite commercial yarn. I love this yarn. It's so soft. It's merino and alpaca and it's tweed and it's lovely and wonderful. So I sat down to cast this on and I cast on the number of stitches and I looked at my needles and I thought, oh my word, this is going to be the tiniest little stocking. What is going on? I must have, I must have counted wrong. So I'm recounting my stitches. I'm looking at the pattern. I can't make it work. You guys, y'all, I was supposed to have ordered the City Tweed Erin weight. I did not realize because I had three patterns together that were kind of part of a bundle, three stockings that I was going to knit. Um, one of them I had knit for myself before. It was in DK. I knew they were all City Tweed. I assumed they were all DK. Did I look? No, I just looked at how many balls of each color I would need. So I went, okay, how can I make this work? And I figured out I could not make it work without buying some yarn. There was just no way. Um, otherwise, they were going to have tiny stockings, and I didn't want that. I wanted full-size, beautiful, big stockings. So I d also didn't want to reorder. And if you're interested in what I had ordered originally, it's at the end of the last episode. So you can go back and watch that if you're interested. Um, I didn't want to reorder all of that yarn. So I thought, okay, for one of the stockings, it is DK. I have the right yarn for that. We're good there. For this one, I thought, well, what if I held everything double? And then I would only need to order because I had ordered more than one ball, thinking all the stockings were in DK of the gray and I'd ordered, I think, four balls of this white, which is Snowbank. So let me run through my colors, too. This is Snowbank. The gray is Orca. And then this blue is Coastal. I only had one of the Coastal. So I thought, OK, I will just order a second ball of Coastal and hold them double. And that seemed to work pretty well. Um, it was a little bit annoying to do the color work and stuff with them held double, but it it was fine. It wasn't a huge deal. And I think it came out great. So that was my little, um, I don't know, that's my little confession. And later on, we'll talk about the other yarn that I ended up buying because I was ordering yarn anyways. So I did have to order for the next stocking I'm going to show you in a minute. I had to reorder all of the yarn for that in the yarn weight. But can we just, I just love how this came out. I am so happy with it. I really hope my nephew loves it. I hope my sister-in-law likes it. Um, it was such a fun pattern. It didn't take me any time at all to knit this up. Um, if you are looking for a stocking design to knit for uh, Christmas this year or gift knit, I would highly, 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 highly recommend checking her out. Um, again, this is the Polar Bear Stroll Stocking by Brianna K, Brianna K Designs. And, ooh, I forgot to mention, there is a crochet version of this. So if you are not a knitter, um, I know there are some people who watch who don't knit or crochet at all. There are some people who watch who just crochet. Um, or if you do both and you prefer crochet, 
there is a crochet version of this. Um, I don't know how you do names in crochet because I am not really a crocheter. Um, but you could totally make a crochet version too. So that's an option if you are looking for a Christmas stocking or just like winter decor. This doesn't scream Christmas to me. So if you don't celebrate Christmas, but you love the whole big stocking thing, you could just make this as winter decor. Anyways, we're going to move on. I've spent way too much time talking about the stocking, but I just, I just stink and love it. It's so cute. Okay. Also, it is still damp. Um, I blocked it two nights ago. It's still a little bit damp, which is why I didn't put the leather tab on it. We'll just set that there. Okay, so we'll move on to the next stocking. And I'm still working on this one, but I don't have much to go. This one is also by Brianna K Designs. There is also a crochet version of this one. It is also knit in City Tweed Aaron <laughs> weight. Um, that one, like I said, I did DK holding double. This one, I have just held the Aaron weight single. And this is, oh, let me see, what is the name of this one? Yeah, this one is the Prancing Deer Knit Stocking. Like I said, there's also a crochet version. So I'm working on the toe. I'm almost done with the toe. I was working on it last night and just lost, lost some steam. But I, oh, I just love this one. So I used Snowshoe as the color here. Um, let me show you. So it calls for Snowbank, but I kind of like the off-white better. I used a uh, Snowbank here, which is the, their like more white creamy color I guess this is more of an like a vintage looking off-white um, I wanted to use the white for sure because polar bear but you can kind of like I said we're working with a lot of artificial light today so there you go you can see the difference between the two but I just feel like this gives off kind of an old-timey warmth and coziness I did add this orca colored strip here um, where I'm going to embroider her name. Her name is Nina, um, not embroider, duplicate stitch. It's just got this beautiful color work. I love this deer. It's so whimsical. So snowshoe, orca, blue blood. I'm all over the place today, but it's fine. Uh, you do for both of these patterns a an afterthought but forethought heel. So the kind where I've put stitches on waist yarn here and I will do the heel soon. Then we have this snowflake detail down on the foot. I absolutely, I have had a blast knitting these stockings. This one I started Monday. Yes, I started this Monday morning and um, I barely worked on it at all yesterday. So I, I mean, these knit up really, really quickly. So if you do need a gift knit for someone or you've been meaning to knit stockings for your family for years and you just never got to it, this knits up, both of these patterns knit up really quickly and you could easily just swap out the background color um, on the deer uh, you could just swap the colors out and do like five of these by Christmas. It wouldn't, it wouldn't take you any time um, if you wanted. Now, fam, that is not an invitation. <laughs> um, but I love, love this. Love this. Oh, and look at that little like detail on the side. It's so sweet. Um, but you could easily just swap the colors out and do a whole bunch of these. Um, so yeah, hopefully this one will be done. I don't know that it'll get done today, but it'll definitely be done tomorrow and blocking. I'm not sure that you'll see this as a finished object. As I said, I would really like these out the door by December 10th. Um, and I podcast next December 9th. So 
uh, watch my Instagram. I am most active over there for the finished object pictures. I have a feeling the stockings won't make another appearance here on YouTube. But there we go. And like I said, crochet version two. All right, we are moving right along here. So let's just, let's go with the other new cast on. So you hadn't seen either of those. This is the third thing that you haven't seen. So on Saturday, we went and visited my grandparents. They're in a retirement nursing home kind of community. Um, my grandmother's in the independent living section. My grandfather's in the nursing home. There's also an assisted living there too. Um, so we went to visit them and we started heading home and I thought we had talked about going to the A Christmas Story house and I thought, let's just go now. Uh, it's on the way, kind of, we're already out, let's just go. It was so packed. They've put, the house went up for sale last week and we have been planning this visit for weeks, but I think people were panicking. Um, and it's not just the house, it's the museum, the whole thing. So... We went, it was a lot of fun. We spent a lot of time waiting in line outside um, and inside, uh, but it was, it was pretty cold, uh, but we had a blast. So uh, A Christmas Story House is the house where the movie A Christmas Story was filmed. Um, and it's open, they have all kinds of interactive things in there. You can pick up, you can recreate the scenes. And then across the street, there's a museum with a lot of the props and things like that from the movie. Um, but, and a lot of the movie was also filmed in Canada, uh, but the scenes with the house were filmed here in Cleveland. So I've always wanted to go and we did. So it seemed like the perfect day to cast on my pink nightmare socks. So this was a Christmas Eve cast on kit last year from Fangirl Fibers. And I have talked about before a lot of the yarn that I got at that time last year from all, all different dyers was kind of tangled and a huge problem to wind up on my Swift. So this yarn got tangled, the pink did. And I couldn't cast it on last Christmas Eve and I was very sad. But my husband recently untangled the entire fingering white ball for me. Um, and it just seemed like the appropriate time. So all of these stitch markers you see here are from Fangirl Fibers. We've got this one that says you'll shoot your eye out. We've got a, oop, where is it? There it is. One of the leg lamp we've got this one that says triple dog dare you and then this one says it's a major award and then I think there's two more um, but these are the ones that I'm using so the yarn is pink nightmare by fangirl fibers and then the mini skein is just an undyed mini and the pattern is also called Pink Nightmare by Left Sock Best Sock. And I don't have a whole lot done on it. Haven't worked on it a ton. But you can kind of see it's a cabled sock. And the cables mimic the bunny ears of Ralphie's uh, pink bunny suit. And then in the back, which I just love the, the thought and the detail, it's hard to see here, um, but she has this little pearl bump that you do to mimic the zipper on the back. So these will be really sweet. They'll be really fun um, to work on during the holidays. I got exactly three rows, three rounds done on a Saturday evening while we watched A Christmas Story. And then I knit some of this. I knit the rest of this pretty much on my lunch hour yesterday. So again, Pink Nightmare uh, Socks by Left Sock Best Sock in Pink Nightmare Yarn by Fangirl Fibers. And that was, like I said, it was a Christmas Eve cast on 
box last year, so I don't think that yarn is available anymore. Uh, but check her out. She has all kinds of great stuff. And then I have It's Living in This Bag by Darn Yarn Minnesota. I love this little bag. It's got a nice leather handle. I really love it. All right, so that's all of my new cast-ons and newer projects. So let's talk about some things that you have seen. So when we went to visit my grandparents, I took along some knitting. And it's my Vertices Unite. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. You guys have seen it. And I got quite a bit done, but it doesn't really look any different. So I got from here all the way up here. So it definitely is getting bigger. We're just not to the point where we're doing anything really very exciting. I am using my Disney yarn. I'm part of the Disney Yarn of the Month Club by Fangirl Fibers. And every month you get a skein of fingering weight yarn dyed uh, based on a Disney movie. So this white, which has got speckles, which you can start to kind of see here, is Glitch. And then the pinky purpley one is Tail as Old as Time. And I'm striping those. And I have this sweet little gnome progress keeper on here. I can't remember where I got him. And I'm knitting this. I never talk about my needles. I knit most things on Chowhoos. Uh, the Pink Nightmare socks I'm knitting on a size one needle. Uh, let's see, the stockings are on a size eight. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, once I get my needles, I don't really think too much about them anymore. <laughs> and these are a uh, size four. So that's my Vertices Unite by Stephen West. Um, it's going to be this massive shawl. I was trying to explain to my grandparents the shawl and the construction, and um, my grandfather's adorable. He could not figure out why I would be making this and how in the world I was going to wear it. Um, so once it's done, I'll have to wear it over there to show them. But we're nowhere near that point. Um, I am knitting the size large, so this will be quite a massive shawl, shlanket. Very excited about it. So that's my Vertices Unite. I'll talk about my other colors uh, maybe next time if I'm at that point, but I, I haven't chosen which color is going to be which for the shawl yet anyways. And if you're interested, you can go back to the last episode, maybe even the one before that, I'm not sure. And I'll talk about those there, but and it's living in a bag I picked up from Wool Gathering. I do not remember. Oh, no, we do have the maker on here. This is by Twisted Yarn and Fiber. And it's this big autumn coffee bag. It's got all these little sayings and cups of coffee and pumpkins. And I just love it. It's got a nice leather handle, big long drawstrings. It's a great bag. Okay, what's next? Let's go here. So I have one for real half object and I have a second almost a half object but close enough. So let's do it with the for real half object. And that is my rye sock. So this is the rye light uh, is the pattern by Tin Can Knits. And the yarn I'm using is a sock set by Ash and Bumble in their field sock base and the color is Autumnal Equinox and there you go you can see so the rye sock has this garter detail at the front I probably could have put it on a sock blocker but I wasn't really thinking about it and this yarn is just so speckly and so pretty this yarn has been a dream to work with. This does, and I'm not really sure why, but it does have a little bit of a different silhouette than the rest of my socks I've knit. Um, 
like almost more of a boot silhouette. I'm not really sure how to describe that. Uh, the pattern has you do, which I did follow the pattern exactly, um, a stockinette heel flap, which I've never done. I've always done either a slip stitch or I have partridge, a uh, reinforced heel flap. So maybe that's part of what's giving it um, more of that look is the little bit of looser gauge, I guess, in the heel. I'm not really sure. It fits just fine. They're nice and tall. They are super cozy. Um, yeah, it just looks a little different. And maybe with blocking, it won't. I'm not really sure. I have not begun my second sock yet. Um, I had fully intended to, and it just hasn't happened. But I did weave in all my ends. So that's a win. So I do have one sock done. Maybe by next time I'll have another sock done. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Hopefully the second sock will at least be started. But we have, we have so many knitting plans, you guys. So many knitting plans. It's not even funny. Um, but that's my rye sock. Rye Light by Tin Can Knits. Like I said, you guys have seen this. So we're going to move on. Like I said, it is Thanksgiving, so we're just kind of going a little bit faster paced than we normally do. Okay, this one, I had fully intended for this to be a finished half object, but again, just ran out of steam right there at the end. And, but I'm so proud of this. I'm so proud of this. This is the Marvelous Mini Mitts by Mina Phillip of knit, the Knitting Expat or Knitting Expat Designs. Anyways, am I holding this right? Yes, I am. Look at this. Look at this. I did this. I can't believe it. So it's a two color fisherman's rib. It's cabled up the front. You guys have seen this. You've heard my struggles. I put in the thumb gusset successfully. I have this little thumb hole. Um, I'm going to put it on for you guys, even though I have this ridiculous magic loop, whatever going on, on the thumb. I think I only have like two or three more rounds on the thumb to go. I just, it's been busy. I haven't had a chance to get that done. And I've been really trying to knock these stockings out. So look at that. Here, I'll straighten that out a bit. There we go. It's so cozy. I did modify it a bit. I didn't knit this ribbing up at the top as long as you were supposed to. Um, because if I had knitted as long as I was supposed to, my pinky would have been like covered and I didn't want that. And I also, it's super wash yarn. The yarn is by Lady Dye Yarns. Um, it's super wash merino and I'm afraid it's going to stretch a little bit in blocking. And if it does, that it might, um, it just come up a little too high. So I did shorten the ribbing at the top. But these are going to be so warm and so cozy. Um, the fisherman's rib is just oh, so squishy, so cozy. I should have painted my nails. I didn't get to, didn't get a chance. So sorry about the yucky nails, guys. But we're doing our best over here. Oh, it's oh, I just can't even. I can't get over it. And it's coming out so well on camera. You can really see the details. Um, I think so far that's the only on purpose modification I've made. Um, <laughs> there have been some other little design elements. I actually have a progress keeper on the inside holding a dropped stitch that I need to uh, secure. Whoops. Um, but yeah, overall, I am really pleased with how well this has gone. I do still have to knit the second one. Um, but I need to get that cast on as soon as I cast this off or else that probably won't happen. Although I really want these mitts. It's been, um, the weather here has been strange. It's been really cold, but then today it's supposed to be almost 60. This is Fahrenheit. Um, 
but on the really cold days, I've wished that I've had these uh, when I'm out going for a walk and I want my fingers free. These would be really lovely. So hopefully I'll finish those soon. Um, like I said, the yarn is, it's fingering weight, 100% superwash merino from Lady Dye Yarns. And it was part of a Schitt's Creek kit, um, I think from last year. Yes, from last year. And uh, the pink color is called No Roses and the charcoal is called Apostrophes. And if you're a fan of the show Schitt's Creek, you will understand those references. Oh, and it's living in my little... I am terrible at remembering to talk about bags. In my little Christmas sweater bag, which it's finally close enough to uh, use these to where it's not weird, my Christmas bags. And that is the bag maker. So my marvelous mini mittens or mitts by Nina Phillip are living there. Is that all my works in progress? No, I have one more. Um, this one you guys have seen many times. This is my Cozy Memories blanket. And I am using the, there are lots of patterns for these. It's just a mitered square blanket. The pattern I'm following is by Shelley DuPont, I believe of Polka Dot Creek. And I think last time I was still working on this square. So I did finish this. And I have started this square here, which I really love. You guys can sort of see, I have a candle over here, so I'm being really careful. Um, I don't want to catch my blanket on fire, but uh, it's so lovely. I, like I said, I've been in a scrappy mini skein mood and I really, this time of year, I always just want to work on blankets like this. So I think maybe today after the dinner is done and we're just all hanging out, that might be my thing that I pull out to knit on while we're doing whatever. Um, usually we have a bigger group for Thanksgiving than this year. Uh, so it'll be, I'm not really, not really sure what to expect. Okay, now we're done with all of my works in progress and my finished objects. So let's see, where do we want to go next? Okay, we'll talk about the stash editions. I did forget to grab an honest, oh, you know what? I see them. I'm going to pause this for a second and go grab them. Okay. So like I said, I went to the A Christmas Story house last weekend and my friend and coworker Sarah, hi Sarah, had gone the weekend before. We didn't even know that the other was going to go. We hadn't talked about it at all. She heard I was thinking about it watching my podcast the last episode. Um, I had no idea she was going anyways. So she had gone the weekend before and she was like, oh my goodness, they have these charms. And you could use them as progress keepers. So she sent me pictures of these, which was great because otherwise I probably would have missed them. So I got two when I went and they were only $1.49 each. Like, seriously, you can't beat that. So I got a little, I got a leg lamp. It's kind of hard to see. I got a leg lamp. And I also got, and I am going to put this on my pink nightmare sock, Ralphie in his pink bunny suit. Isn't that adorable? I love it. It's hard to see the detail. Um, they're a little shiny, so it's not picking up very well there. But if you are looking for progress keepers and you see all of these gorgeous clay ones and things by makers and think, I just cannot, I can't afford that. Look at like little like gift shops and stores 
little charm bracelets with the lobster claw or charm bracelets. A bracelet would be interesting hanging off your knitting. Um, but little charms for charm bracelets with the lobster claw clasp are perfect. And they're usually pretty inexpensive. So that's a great way to um, get some progress keepers if ordering from a maker just isn't in your budget. So thank you, Sarah, for telling me. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I can't wait to use these. Um, so that was my first stash edition. My second, and I am not counting the stocking yarn, by the way. It is a stash edition, but uh, uh, we're just, we're not going to count that. I will count what I bought with it. So I had said I wasn't sure if I was going to do turkey trot. Um, but it was already ordering this other yarn and this yarn was 50% off and it's exactly what I needed. And I found a 20% off coupon for knit picks. So I did it. I ordered the yarn for Turkey Trot, which starts today. If you don't know, the Turkey Trot is a mystery knit along, uh, put on by Marley Bird over the course of Thanksgiving weekend. It is not holiday themed. So if you do not, I have some friends who do not celebrate holidays at all. I have friends that don't um, celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, if you don't celebrate, this is not a holiday themed thing. It just takes place over this weekend because here in the U.S. Uh, most people have time off of work uh, and it's just sort of a fun thing to do. The finished thing is not like a it's not like a turkey or anything. It's not Thanksgiving themed. It's not, it's nothing like that. Um, so if you want to participate, I would highly recommend it. You can stash dive. Uh, for all the details, you can go to marleybird.com. She is offering a silver platter experience this year, which I think is like $17. And you get, um, the pattern and some extras and video help and all kinds of stuff. It really is a great value. But if that's not in your budget or you're like, I've never done a mystery knit along and I just don't want to invest in that, that's cool too. She has a free version over on her blog and every day uh, starting today through, I think the last clue comes out Sunday, um, you go to her blog there will be a link, you click on it, and you get that pattern clue. So it's a portion of the pattern. It is so much fun. My friend Liz um, told me about Marley Bird years ago. Um, she does a game day uh, mystery knit along for Super Bowl Sunday. That was my first one I did. And I was absolutely hooked. I love mystery knit alongs. They're so much fun. And of course, I... You all know I love Marley Bird. I love her patterns. I love her designs. Um, I'm one of her testers and sample knitters, um, but I'm not getting paid to promote her at all. I just, I just love her stuff. So I will be participating in Turkey Trot. She did release Clue One early. It was supposed to come out this evening. It is already out. I'm so excited about it. So let me show you what I got. So this is a brand new, as of like two weeks ago, yarn from Knit Picks. And it is called Upcycled Alpaca Blend um, in the worsted weight. I believe there's a sport weight version too. And it's soft. It's squishy. It is 33% alpaca, 34% wool, and 33% acrylic. And let's see, it is a hand wash dry flat yarn, but it's so lovely. So this is my main color. I got two balls of this and it's called Azul. Then my next color is this really beautiful, rich chocolatey brown and it's called Biscotti. And my third color is this um, beige called parchment. 
so. These are my colors together, which if you've been here a while or you know me personally, you know I typically go for bright, bold colors. And this is a much more muted palette. Um, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. And I thought that the colors would really pop together. Here, let me... Oh yeah, there we go. Here, we'll kind of show how they all look. This, well, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I think they'll have really nice contrast and they just go really well. So I will be casting on, that on in a little bit. If you'll pardon me, I'm just gonna get a drink of coffee. The air is very dry here. Um, my throat's been drying out. Okay, I think that's everything. Oh, and also, I know it's a little bit late now. I don't know how long the sale went on for, or maybe it's still going, you could look. Um, the yarn I bought for Turkey Trot, under 20 bucks, right? I mean, I couldn't pass that up, but, um, yeah, very affordable on sale. So that was lovely. Um, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go grab a drink of water real quick because my throat is drying out. The air is so dry. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I think all we have left to talk about is future plans. No, we have one more stash edition that I'm not showing you. So I told you all a few episodes ago, I think, that my husband ordered me an advent. I gave him a list of potential ones that I would like. And he picked one. And it arrived yesterday. So he got me. We're all so surprised. <laughs> Fangirl Fibers. We're not surprised at all. Her Encanto advent. I am so excited. So I'm not going to show it. I did open the box. It came yesterday. I did open it. I have seen the extras. Um, it does come with a code for a pattern. So I am going to make the pattern that's included. I didn't open the yarn. The extras are amazing but I'm not going to show them in case anyone else got it and um, has more self-control than I do and is waiting until December 1st to open the box. But it's going to be awesome. I'll be sharing it with you. I'm not doing Vlogmas. Um, I had thought about it. I would really love to do Vlogmas, which if you're not familiar, Vlogmas is... Um, usually starts December 1st, ends 24th or 25th of December. And it's just mostly, I don't know if other communities do it or if it's just like the knitting crocheting community. I don't know. But you do a vlog every day leading up to Christmas. I would absolutely love to do it. But one, I don't edit and I don't really have great equipment to edit. Um, so that's problem one. Problem two, I don't think I would have enough content to make it worthwhile. Um, I work for a library and I'm very conscientious about, um, a patron privacy. So I do work full time. There would be a lot of my day that I couldn't film at all. Uh, and I'm just not home very much. So I'm not really sure Vlogmas would work very well for me. However, I do have a lot of fun things coming up in December. So maybe I'll do some video footage over on Instagram. Maybe I'll do like a little opening the yarn each day on Instagram. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Let me know in the comments. Um, 
if that's something you would want or if I should just not worry about that and skip it. So anyways, Encanto Advent, future plan, planning to do the pattern included in that kit. I also have, where is it? My yarn is caked. It's ready to go for my Christmas socks this year. And I'm just going to do these, I think, as plain vanilla socks. Uh, this was a Christmas sock set or box, maybe. I'm not sure. Last year from Fangirl Fibers, again. And it was based on The Office. So I've got um, this bag by Faith's Thread. We've got Dwight as an elf. We've got Happy Holidays from Dunder Mifflin, candy canes, bows, star wand things. It's lovely. And then the inside is this peppermint stripe. They came with these fun stitch markers. I'm so sorry, guys. My throat is just drying out. Which probably means it's time to wrap it up. So I've got Dwight as an elf. We have Phyllis's mitten, oven mitt there. We've got, oh, I can't think of his name. I think is that Moe's as Belschnickel. Belschnickel. Might be Dwight as Belschnickel. We have the teapot that Jim gave Pam. We have Michael Scott with his Santa hat. And then we have the iPod. There you go. So those came with it. I'm going to get more water. Okay. Again, so sorry for all the pauses. So I caked up the yarn. I showed it last time in the hank. If you want to see it in the hank, it's in the last episode. And I didn't do a good job of securing the end, but it's fine. Um, this is Dunder Mifflin Holidays. <sighs> I can't wait to knit this up. I think this is going to be so fun and so festive. And it just, oh, these colors are so much fun. So I absolutely can't wait to start knitting on this. And then it came with two mini skeins. So we have this like true cherry red and this green. I'll show all three together. There we go. So I think I've talked about this before. On one sock, I'm going to do the heels and cuffs in green. Or no, not the heels and cuffs. The toes and cuffs in green, heel in red, and then reverse it for the other one. Toes and cuffs in red heel and green. I think it'll be fun. So I haven't fully decided. I either want to cast these on this evening or we're going to decorate for Christmas tomorrow. Maybe I'll cast these on sitting next to the tree once the decorations are up. Not sure yet. But those will be started this weekend. Uh, which will be lovely. We have so many fun things, but also very social things going on. Really over the next two and a half weeks. Uh, and I will want something, I will want a plain vanilla sock just to knit on. So those will be perfect. Turkey Trot, we've already talked about. I will be casting that on today for sure. Um, oh, my other future. This is like... I don't know that this is a plan so much as just an idea. So I opened the episode talking about Amber of a Lovely Yarn podcast's scrappy episode. And that has just totally inspired me. So I have a ton of mini skeins, right? 
I'm sort of toying with an idea of making next year, 2023, the year of the minis. And like every, maybe every third project I cast on has minis. I don't know. Or scraps. Maybe we could do some kind of knit along with this. I'm not sure. So if you think that sounds fun or like a good idea, let me know down below. We are going to move through here and wrap this up pretty quickly because my voice is done. So, um, life update. We were able to, oh my goodness, at exactly two hours last, okay, hang on a sec. Okay. I, again, I'm so sorry. Two Saturdays ago, the day after I last podcasted, um, I was able to leave work a couple of hours early to look at a vehicle that we found online that was used within our budget. It was the only time I had the whole week to look. Um, our insurance company totaled our car. We got a good amount for it. So that was good. We had plenty for a down payment on something new. Um, not new, new, but new to us. And it was the start of a seven day work week. I wasn't going to have time to look for a vehicle. And our rental company was, or our rental company, our um, insurance company was only covering our rental vehicle for a week. So I had exactly two hours to go look for a vehicle and find something. First thing we looked at was a was an SUV that we have really we've talked about before trading our car in for an SUV. Just hadn't ever done it. Um it was exactly what we wanted in good condition, about half the amount of miles on our car and 2 years newer in our budget. And it was perfect. So we bought it, um, which was crazy. Less than 48 hours after my husband called me and said he'd been in this accident, we were signing papers for this car. It was crazy. It worked out so wonderfully, so perfectly. Um, we were able to pick the car up later that week. And it's wonderful. So we do have a car payment now, which is kind of a bummer, but oh, it just worked out so well. So thank you everyone who gave such kind encouragement. Um, and it, it just, it meant so much. So thank you all so, so much. This community has been nothing but supportive and kind. And I just... I'm so thankful for all of you. I really, I just, I love our little community here. It's so lovely. Um, so yeah, car thing got totally resolved and that was it. It was a very, very wild thing, but, um, thankfully it hasn't been drawn out or anything like that. It just has been resolved very quickly. So that's been great. Um, like I said, we have lots coming up over the next couple weeks. Uh, tomorrow is one of my brother's birthdays, so we're going out to dinner. My other brother is sleeping over tonight um, after Thanksgiving, and we're going to hang out. Uh, Saturday, I work, and then we are going to Zoo Lights with a couple of our friends, and that will be really lovely. Then next Friday... I'm going to my very first knit night. I'm so excited. Um, some of my group at work that has all started knitting, we're all going to hang out and have a little knit night, and it's going to be so lovely. Then the following day, um, I'm going to a Christmas party for my parents' campground, and I have some work meetings coming up that I'll be able to knit during and other dinners with friends and it's just it's gonna be jam-packed but it's going to be so much fun 
perfect sock knitting. Perfect time for sock knitting. All right, I am going to go because we are just drying out over here and I need to start getting things in crock pots and the oven and the parade is going to start. <sighs> Tis the season. So anyways, though, I hope that if you celebrate, you're having a, a you've had, this probably won't go up until after you're done, but that you've had a lovely Thanksgiving um, and that you just um, have a great rest of November, a great start to your December, and I hope that you'll join me here next time. Uh, please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Um, it really helps get the word out about this channel. And I just, I love interacting with you guys. It's so much fun. Okay, well, as you all know, I will be over here knitting in my little corner of Parmadise. And I hope that you can find some quiet time to knit or craft in your little corner of paradise wherever you are. And that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for joining me.